Yeah, so yeah, good morning lovely people and welcome to your yoga solutions live on this uh, rather so chilly winter. This morning. is this is not your usual yoga. It's it it's a way of looking at yoga, a way of approaching your body mind relationship. And it's actually where the answers lie. And um it's considered as advanced because the way mo we most most of us approach yoga is or start yoga is you do postures and you feel good when you've done them you know which is fine it's not, nothing wrong with that um, but this is about change uh, that that kind of yoga where you just do stuff and repeat it, it it's it's um, if you happen to do it well then it will lead to health um, if you do it in the way that feels good for you, then it will lead to a sort of maintenance. It will be it will it will keep you as you are as you get older. Now, if that's in perfect balance, then that won't lead to any health problems. But if it involves an avoidance or an exaggeration of a particular preference, then it can actually lead to problems. But less than if you didn't do anything so you know it's all good it's all good and it's sort of considered advanced to do anything that involves changing your relationships to things and um, moreover shifting your relationship to your body is one of the most powerfully transformative things that you can do if you to improve your relationship with your body i i found so much value in this in um, surrendering to the body's intelligence because it is way more intelligent than I ever was. <laughs> I thought I was bright because I could understand stuff and I've got a high IQ and all that sort of thing. But um, no, it's nothing compared to how power powerfully intelligent the body is. If you can have the wherewithal to listen to what it's telling you in a with a straightforward kind of understanding of what you're trying to achieve. And what you're trying to achieve, I think, is a good relationship to life, a good relationship to what you do, a good relationship to the earth beneath you, a good relationship to the space you occupy. And how you do that, well, what do you do every day? You, you, uh, it's through the breath. You breathe moment by moment by moment. And it's, the, and it's habits in breathing and that kind of lock you into particular ways of doing things and make other things feel different. Right? Different, different can be good. Different is where the answers lie. And um, there is a different way of relating to the world and the space that you occupy that leaves you supported between above and below and free to expand into the world around you without the bother of having to carry your weight. And all of that is powered by this gift of the breath. And if you can sort of, if you can embody that potential, if you can take on that idea as a, a potential reality and approach your practice from that perspective, You'll discover everything I share with you. Um, maybe not in the same words, maybe not with the same background. Uh, I've got anatomical background, so I sort of understand how to explain things in those ways. But, but the, the anatomy is not, the language of anatomy is not the answer. The, the, it's the language of life, the language of you, you relating. That's where the answers lie. So um, I shall leave it there. I've been Mark J. Aquaviva. And uh, come and join me for one of my Saturday workshops. I've, I've set them up all the way through till January now. Um, Saturday mornings, 10.30 to 1. I call them a celebration of the body and breath. And that's what it is. And they're, they're always geared to whoever turns up. So um, come and join me and uh, I'll give you a direct personal solution that will be relevant to everyone else. Okay? Much love to you all. Same time, same place next week. Bye now.